SEC tournament, but also thinking about the postseason. I like that. Reach for the beach. Let's put that <laughs> in a T-shirt. We're underway <laughs> from Razorback Field tonight. Tell you what, we're blessed with the weather a couple of nights ago. Record lows. It feels much more like uh, early fall tonight. Pretty good little shove there as well from Jennings. Arkansas has outscored their opponents 28 to 10 this year. LSU 33 to 23. There's Molly Swift. Well, she's a veteran, a Nebraska native. Came from the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs with their head coach, Sean Hudson. She played a year there for Coach Hudson before they both made the ranks from uh, Division II to the SEC in Division I. Down goes Ellie Pottajil. Taken down by Molly Baker, another Molly on this team. When we were here last, Arkansas got a couple of early goals in a 3-0 win against Vanderbilt. Flynn will send one towards the box. Ball hits the ground. LSU trying to clear. Arkansas is going to get another look, but it's deflected and rolls out. That was a huge opportunity for Swift. She came off her line very confident, as she should. Um, but I definitely think you either got to get a hand on it and and punch that one away or catch it cleanly. You can't give Arkansas that time and space. Let's take another look before an Arkansas corner kick. This was a good service. She had it in both hands, didn't she? It looked like she actually may have gotten taken down. So credit to her for being physical there. Another one sent in towards the box, headed up and out from Tankersley. Let's talk a little bit about Swift, though. A couple of matches ago, Kelly, LSU lost at home to Bama five to nothing. And Coach Hudson felt like they played well for 20 minutes. They had a long conversation with Molly Swift after. In her last appearance against Tennessee, it was a 0-0 draw on the road against a good Falls team. Yeah, Coach said she has unbelievable resilience and she's willing to take those risks. And most of the time they do pay off. But in that Bama game, like you said, she had to have a conversation with her after. And uh, I think in the game against Tennessee, she came out and she made a couple really good saves to keep them in the game. So hopefully she'll do the same here against Arkansas tonight. Coach Hudson had a couple of lines. Can't wait to throw those in tonight. One of those, talking about Swift, was reading the momentum of the game. And I think that goes for any sport. When do you take those chances? When are you a little more conservative based on which way the game might be trending? Yeah, absolutely. She said sometimes Swift knows you have to just get the ball to the halfway line and not take as many risks back there. Coach Hudson from Wales. Played for the Wales national team when she was 16 from Newport. I had to look up to see where that is from Wrexham because I've become a <laughs> Wrexham fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm locked into the documentary with Ryan and Rob and uh, the Wrexham squad. But a little bit further south is Newport. Arkansas has had a couple of early chances. Another one sent forward by Flynn. Mackenzie Malum could not quite get there. Defended well by LSU. Three straight ranked teams LSU has played that disappointing loss at home against Alabama but Arkansas knows how good the Crimson Tide are and then that draw at Tennessee 0-0 LSU actually became the the second team this season to finish 90 minutes with a clean sheet against Tennessee so kudos to them yeah pretty impressive and I think that was important for them coming off that match at home against Alabama seeing their firepower had a goal taken away early on an offsides when they felt like they had jumped ahead and then never ended up finding the back of the net. Molly Baker trying to send this one forward. On a nice run. Wide of the post past Grace Barbara. Early chance. 
for the Tigers. And Baker, the North Carolina transfer, played 14 games in two years with that top program at UNC. Now, there's a couple of other Northern Colorado players. You have to define which UNC you're talking about, <laughs> but that was Carolina, the Tar Heels. Arkansas wastes little time playing one in. Tankersley sent down by Jennings. And Malum can't run it down for Arkansas. How about this? The last five losses for these teams, they each lost to Alabama. They each lost to Mississippi State. Arkansas lost to Rutgers in the Elite Eight. LSU this year in Piscataway. Arkansas lost early to St. Louis. I believe they only have one loss all year. And LSU was defeated in the round of 32 by Memphis. But Kelly, they pretty much have lost to the exact same teams, including each other going back to the last regular season match last year in Baton Rouge. That is very strange. You don't see that very often. They could commiserate about the Bulldogs or the Crimson Tide or even Rutgers. Arkansas lost there in the Elite Eight. LSU had the 2-0 lead and fell 3-2. They each defeated one another in the course of about four days last year. Another corner for Arkansas. Headed back by the Tigers and LSU trying to clear, and they will. Should this be an even match at some point, first half, second half, maybe it won't be a complete surprise considering how they played against the same teams. Wasilla Dewara Sawale is the spine of this team, according to her coach. Touch that one before it'll finally <coughs> trickle out. Arkansas has had a couple of corners already. There's Sage Glover from New Orleans. A couple of elbows early. This one's getting. Physical right out of the gates tonight. Tankersley trying to run this one down, but played back towards Swift. Alicia Garcia controls another one of the veterans. 30 goals in her career for LSU. It's a nice mix of fifth year seniors, COVID seniors, and some youngsters on this LSU roster. Glover sends one wide of her teammate. Arkansas had that play surrounded. Band in attendance as well tonight here at Razorback Field. Had some huge crowds this season. An opportunity for more matches at Razorback Field in that first NCAA tournament game, and who knows beyond that. Maybe another chance to play at home all the way to the Elite Eight. Take it away, intercepted briefly by Pontagil. Tankersley trying to win possession. I think we're starting to see LSU, I mean, being tested by Arkansas. Coach said it earlier this week, Arkansas is going to jump in front of you. They'll challenge you in the air, and they'll put the ball behind you and ask you to deal with it. And that's what I've been seeing this first nearly 10 minutes in. She talked about their game being direct, and I think we know that having seen it on a regular basis. But she also said you have to be brave when you play Arkansas. Can't be fearful. She had some fun lines. That I enjoyed her conversation about that Alabama game, and it probably wasn't a fun one to recap. But again, she felt like they all played the Crimson Tide for 20 minutes, and then she said they kind of knocked the stuffing out of us after that. <laughs> yeah, those wins are always hard to talk about, but she seemed to, to know that her team, again, came back from it, and, and to walk away from the game against Tennessee, nil-nil, um, that was a win that her team has, that resilience she talked about. 
Foiled a couple of maybe early opportunities for the Razorbacks. Two shots for Arkansas, one for LSU in the opening minutes. Almost 10 minutes in. Played back by Ella Riley, and there's an individual I think we'll talk more about later on for the volume of minutes she's played as well as she has played this year as Arkansas early in the year had to deal with some injuries from the defensive side. And as we talk about Grace Barbara and how well she's played the four consecutive clean sheets and shutouts, you know, Kelly, the defenders are very much a part of that when it comes to a team shutout. Oh, they are. The, the back line and the goalkeeper, they're, they're kind of a, a knit group and they're a family back there. And coach said that Ella Riley and Emily Hauser and the others on the back line really hold down the fort back there and they, they work so well collectively. And for Ella, just a freshman out of Murphy's Borough, Tennessee. Bree Hunter was injured early in the year. We saw Bree come back in recent weeks and starting to work her way back into this rotation, not playing anywhere near a full game while Riley and others continue to get an absolute bulk of the minutes. For the time being, Hunter is back in the match. Played back by LSU. Arkansas has a chance. The swing from Filippo was knocked away. I ran into uh, Jessica today, Filippo at the Jones Center. Now, she's the senior out of Quebec. And I said, hey, what language did you grow up speaking? And she said French. First and foremost, she grew up speaking French, as you would imagine, from Quebec. English was her second language. So it's a little bit unique. That is very unique, but very cool. I'm sure she's taught some of this Razorback <laughs> team some French. Talk about the international influence as well for LSU a little bit later on. But you can imagine that. You see it pretty much every week in the SEC, especially when your coach either didn't grow up in the U.S. or have some recruiting connections across the pond. There was a foul on B. Franklin. But Bree's taken some shots, hasn't she, in recent weeks? Tough young lady, and happy to have her out there and healthy. Bree Hunter, as well, as I mentioned, on the field for the time being. Arkansas with a chance. That one trickles away. Swift was. Well in front of the goal, Hawks tried to poke one up and over. Yeah, she kind of got caught in no man's yes. land, which is the last place you want to be as a keeper. You have to quickly drop back, and that's a dangerous place to be when you're playing Arkansas. Another corner kick, the third coming up for the Razorbacks. Ellie Potajua will not do the honors. It'll be Emily Hauser. Sends one up towards the box, headed away by the Tigers. Flynn will try and track it down. See if Arkansas can get a secondary opportunity. And they will not. We talk about styles of play often. Usually it's in comparison to Arkansas's more direct style. There are teams much more possession oriented does seem like LSU is a little bit of both. They're, they're very skilled, very precision on some of their passes and movements. And while they may not go as fast or direct as Arkansas, they've been able to spoil them with some nice efforts on the other side of the field. 
They have, and when they were scouting Arkansas, they were talking about, you know, Arkansas has staples to their game. Um, we know we're going to have to come out and be a little more aggressive and, and try to connect passes when we can, but if they're able to match Arkansas's physical g game and maintain composure at times when, when they're pressing you high up the field, there's opportunities to expose their space in their back line, and I think they're making the most of that so far. Got a player down for LSU. Not sure what happened. Trainers quickly responded. But a scary situation here at Razorback Field. Trying to get some medical personnel to the LSU Tiger as quickly as possible. I didn't see what happened. Did you, Kelly? I, I didn't. I saw Don, uh, Arkansas's trainer, rush over, rush over there to, to help. Let's go back and take a look. Top left of your screen. That's what surprised me. I didn't see anybody in the area, and it's almost as if maybe there was a serious complication. You see the teammate as well come racing down the sideline. There's so much contact in this game, oftentimes away from the ball, where maybe there's some jockeying, some positioning. Clearly, that was so far away from the ball, there wasn't any other teammate or opposing player anywhere nearby. So the clock is stopped. 30 minutes and change to go in this first half as the... Uh, Tension, as you could imagine, is placed on the Tigers and the health of their teammate. And this is not an easy position to be in. There's the game stoppage, of course, and there's still that concern as well for their teammate and just exactly what's wrong and what transpired. Yeah, in moments like these, your, your focus is all on your teammate and hoping and praying that they're okay, and you just got to hope for the best there. Well, that is a good sign as far as beginning to sit up. Several medical personnel doing their work on Angelina Thorsen, the native of Sweden. Young lady who's had seven assists and a goal this year. Very much part of the international contingent of Tigers. Angelina is being kind of guided over towards her team's bench. Attention, seeing if that injury is one that might take her out of the rest of the match, but I think it's a good sign she was able to get up with the assistance of the trainer and make it towards her team's bench. Here's the substitution as well. Jocelyn Oliveri, another of the Colorado Springs natives, checks in that Colorado slash international connection to Coach Hudson. She came from Colorado Springs in the D2 ranks, and then, of course, her international background. The roster seems to be comprised of several players from both areas of her career. And, Kelly, it's amazing. You think about Coach from Wales and Talk about Iceland with Herman's daughter and Sweden and Ghana. 
you start to throw a lot of flags on that graphic. That took some work. That is a lot of uh, international presence on that team, but I think that also speaks to Coach Hudson's level of talent in which she can recruit. I mean, there's so many talented soccer players overseas, and to get them to LSU, I think, speaks highly of her. You've had some firsthand experience with seeing the passion I have. of some of the international players. Yeah, playing in Portugal, Spain, some, some great talent and competition over there. Is it eye-opening to see the passion for soccer once we get out of our country? It is. I mean, the, ki the kids over there are playing just soccer. <laughs> There's no other sport that, like, exists over there. It's we pretty get a cool. Bat and a ball somewhere for <laughs> someone. Played in and caught easily by Swift. Inside 30 minutes to go in our first half since resuming. Talked about Swift playing that one year. University of Colorado at Colorado Springs, she had 18 starts. It was for a team that went 19-2, and two, and I think sometimes there might be a thought that there's a different caliber of athlete, Division Two to Division One. Obviously, Coach Hudson felt like Molly Swift could play at this level with her success as a freshman. Certainly, it has carried over to the SEC as Tankersley hit the deck hard. Saw Anna Potagil on the side of that previous picture. Now she's just one goal away from equaling the program's all time goal scoring record. She's going to run forward here. B. Franklin sent one up and over the crossbar and out. I suppose anytime Potagil plays from here on out, she has that chance to again tie, possibly even set that record. It would be an amazing mark and one that she can continue to add to for another full season. Yeah, what a resume. Franklin thinking maybe she had a chance to put Arkansas on the scoreboard first. Swift in no hurry to play this one forward with the goal kick. Left footed swing. was Oliveri who checked in a few moments ago. Arkansas trying to disrupt with Mackenzie Mallon. Plays it out. Throw in here for the Tigers. Do you have a sense where LSU's goal scoring opportunities may exist in this match? If there to get some good looks against Barbara in Arkansas? I mean, I think against Barbara, you're you're going to have to um, just have either an incredible shot or uh, a penalty kick, honestly. Those are your best chances. She's an amazing shot stopper. Um, she has such a good defensive line to rely on to clear the ball. So LSU, if they get the chance, they're going to have to pray. It's it's one that Barb or uh, Grace just can't get to. Yeah, that's the tough part, right? You don't have that many chances. Could have to maximize those. Good look at Grace, the Florida native, but Princeton transfer. She's done some interviews. By the way, she is a fantastic interviewee. We talk about COVID years. She had a true COVID year because when she was in the Ivy League, she was sent home basically for 16 months without competition. And Arkansas COVID years playing a full fall and a full spring. A COVID year in the Ivy League was go home and come back in a year plus. I mean, those are vastly different. Yeah, but Coach Hale talked about how she didn't miss a beat. I mean, when they recruited her, she was still playing great when she could play, and she certainly stepped up to the plate in the SEC. I mean, she went from a sophomore to a senior in a blink of an eye from a competition standpoint. And man in full throw today, and Grace was committed briefly to another SEC team before she decided to come to Arkansas instead, and I would say the Hogs are glad that she made that decision. Swift will collect. All-time series between these two teams. Arkansas trails LSU. The Tigers own it 15-11-3. As we mentioned earlier, they each defeated the other late last year. LSU winning 
in the final regular season game when Colby Hale said they were desperate and outplayed us. There you see the 4-2 LSU win. Arkansas won 2-1 to in the tournament, and as Coach Hudson told us, maybe our win <laughs> to get in to the tournament added some fuel to the fire for the Razorbacks. I think it was just three days later. I think they were on a 15-game winning streak going into the postseason when they lost against LSU, and Coach said there's some positives to not losing, but it almost becomes a weight, and he felt like it possibly was a weight um, when they lost LSU I think then. it's a great term, a weight, right, because everybody's aware of that win streak, and any coach that's riding a 14-15 game winning streak going into the postseason, the thought is maybe like the Dodgers in baseball. Could we really just lose and be done when we've had this amazing year? But a loss kind of allows everybody to recalibrate. And Colby likes to say losing reminds us that winning is hard. It's not easy. Sometimes when you win 14 in a row, I think things might feel easy or you feel like it's preordained that your team's going to get a win. Yep, no game is a given. And in the SEC, any team can beat each other on any given day. Flynn trying to make a run. It's been a few elbows tonight. Bree Hunter. Goes down after a mini collision with Noel. And finally a whistle from our referee. He let him play for a while. Did Andrew Mashashi. Hunter went down twice in that sequence. Take it away by LSU. Waiting to see if Baker might get a chance for a shot on goal. Inside 23 minutes to go in our first half tonight from Racer Backfield. Oliveri came on after the injury to Thorson. Wow. Boy, that was a headshot. At Sawale. Doesn't seem to be phased. Native of Ghana. Interesting path here. She was at Lamar University in Beaumont, Texas, not that far from Baton Rouge. Went to the junior college ranks to Navarro, then to LSU. Ghana to the U.S. is a lot. Beaumont to uh, Baton Rouge is not, <laughs> but it is quite a step up in competition. Shots have been hard to come by Arkansas with four tonight, one for LSU. There has not been a single shot on goal this entire match. I think just speaking to that uh, defensively for LSU, going back to um, what Coach Hudson said about uh, LSU, just they're they're showing the grit and the defensive solidarity that, that she's been wanting them to show all season long, and she thinks this is confidence from that Tennessee game going into going into the tough Arkansas opponent that they're seeing tonight. Uh, yes, that was the other phrase that I jotted down: defensive solidarity. What does that mean to you? I it just means being consistent and trusting your back line to do what you've taught them to do. Filippo sent one towards Potagil, and she let that one go by. I think we talked about Arkansas's back line, how that's helped put up those shutouts for Grace and company, certainly the team effort, and I would sense that's what Coach Hudson has in mind as well, defensive solidarity. And just working together as a unit um, and working on the back line, you literally have to work with the back four to prevent those goals and to prevent the ball coming back into space and to just help your goalkeeper overall. And quite frankly, I think we've seen that from both teams. We have not had a single shot on goal yet. 
despite a couple of corner kicks early from Arkansas. DiFilippo set up and over the crossbar. Arkansas quickly had two chances. Huge save by Swift coming out and doing what she can on that breakaway save, putting her body literally on the line and using her feet to just deflect that shot was just incredible. Let's see this one again. She got the high five from Jennings. Filippo so close maybe to sneaking that one by the left arm of Swift. Watch it from the back end. Look how close maybe it was to sneaking through or going over. Then the second one went over the crossbar. And credit for Swift, too, for getting up for rebound number two. And she knew that that ball was not in her hands or her team's hands, and Arkansas was going to take another shot if they had one. So that was our first shot on goal and a good one. Inside 20 minutes in our first half. Poked up by Potagill, headed back by LSU. Last few minutes have been played on this end of the field. Tankersley. Taylor Berman into the match. There's Flynn again, the UCLA transfer. Seems like LSU has some tremendous speed as well. It's been able to disrupt Arkansas. They do, and I've actually been surprised with how well they've been able to keep up with Arkansas in, in their speed and um, physicality overall. Speed's an amazing resource in college sports, regardless of the competition. A little nutmeg action there briefly. I'm proud of you for knowing that How word. about that? What like nutmeg that? is. Every <laughs> once in a while, I'll catch you by surprise. You're usually <laughs> using baseball terms, uh, so I like baseball I'm proud terminology. I'm proud of you. One a day. What a month. <laughs> <laughs> Flynn ready to throw it in from the corner. That sloped corner here at Racer Backfield. One thing about Arkansas playing at home, when they score first, it does change the complexion. You know how tough it's going to be running uphill. Arkansas 6-0 this year at home. That one caught out of the air by Swift. So I would say a 0-0 first half should it stand, Kelly, would be a win for LSU. Absolutely. I mean, going back to their game against Tennessee, having that clean sheet, um, I think Arkansas kind of plays at a 0-0 uh, score 90 minutes of the game, but for LSU, um, they definitely will consider that a win at half. And I think on the road, your thought is, as long as we can keep it even, we have a chance we sneak one at some point, all of a sudden that momentum completely switches. And it was such an unusual match last year in Baton Rouge with six goals scoring. Filippo maybe a chance to make a run here. Headed away by the Tigers. Good effort by Oliveri. There's Potagill. Ellie Potagill had it disrupted. Flynn trying to win possession. Tankersley runs it down. Centers one, no one home, no teammate there to possibly poke one in. Arkansas not willing to give up on this just yet. And cleared briefly by the Tigers. Bodies down for both teams. That was Alicia Garcia as well. Filippo right into the arms of Swift. That had some heat to it, but Swift Caught it cleanly. 
as soon as you said no shots on goal, Arkansas said, we're going to change that. This one was tattooed, but right at Swift. Seventh shot for Arkansas, just one for LSU. Couple on goal for the Razorbacks. That's a pretty good angle of the game speed from behind the net. There's some of the acceleration from Noel, the Louisiana native. And a whistle from our official with 14 minutes and change to go in our first. I would say we have not had many fouls for as physical as this has been. I think that was just our seventh. Three apiece before that whistle. It's Maya Gordon from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Herman's daughter had that kick in for being the leading goal scorer. We have not seen her in that attacking end maybe a tremendous amount here in this first. Yeah, I know she probably is hungry for that opportunity, but they just haven't, haven't gotten their opportunities yet. I think she was meant to be a soccer player. Her mom was on the Icelandic national team. Her father, Herman, was in the English Premier League for five different clubs. Yeah, Coach said she is a huge amount of talent to this team, and she's just – there isn't an element to her game that she can't execute well. Yeah, I think that's exciting for a young lady who's a freshman from Reykjavik, Iceland. A lot of soccer ahead of her. I wonder how old she was when she was first kicking a soccer ball around the household. <laughs> I'm sure it was before she could even walk. Uh, you might be right. <laughs> that might have been in a crib. These teams, in a sense, maybe feeling each other out just a bit, kind of throwing a few punches and backtracking. We had a car come out. Well, that's a new storyline. I'd say the ref has been actually very fair in letting them play out some of these fouls, so he may just, you know, be setting the tone. Alicia Garcia picked up the yellow card. Another Colorado native. She started at New Mexico, spent several years as a Lobo for made, making the transition to the SEC. Headed up, but caught again. A leaping two-handed catch by Swift. There was a split second, Kelly. I thought maybe that had enough steam to carry up and beyond her reach. To be honest, I thought it was behind her, but credit to her for making that save. You saw her teammate go give her a slap and say, good job. Just a huge, huge save again for Swift. Taylor Berman gonna try and head this one into your living room. And there's the leaping effort by Molly Swift. Arkansas still looking for another look. They've had eight shots, three on goal here in this first. LSU sending the numbers back tankersly. Knocked down, and LSU will take over possession. That defensive play was made by Lindsey Jennings, one of the captains. From Conroe, Texas, in your neck of the woods. Maybe a chance for the Tigers. Disrupted again by Arkansas.
Arkansas coming off that 2-1 loss in the top 7-8 matchup in Alabama. LSU, their most recent match was the 0-0 draw Tennessee, 16th ranked Tennessee. And if the season had ended on Sunday, these teams would line up and meet in the conference tournament for the second straight year. Yeah, that doesn't happen often either. What was your term? Reach the beach? What was that? Yeah, reach the beach. Okay. I'm sure that's in both of these teams' <laughs> mindsets right now. Or is it in Tankers layout? Arkansas knows they're going to be at the beach. I know there's a few teams still trying to jockey for positioning. But regardless, I, I think you, you know, want to put yourself forward as best you can from a seating standpoint. It might almost be warmer here in Arkansas tonight than the beach. October 30th through November the 6th. Should that change? Maybe I'll be an even bigger soccer fan and head to Pensacola. Not a bad place to play. I mean, if it's 20 here again like it was this week and it's 70 there, count us in. Yeah, I'm going to Florida. Nine and change to play in the first half. That one dangerously rolled away. There's a touch from as well from McPartland, another English native. finally trickle out. Grace Barbara said after her years at Princeton, she was going to put athletics first. I would imagine at Princeton, that's hard to do. Yeah, I don't think you can do that <laughs> in an Ivy not. League. You know, the one thing, you think about the Ivy League in most sports, though, Kelly, and you think, well, that's clearly a level down in competition. I think there were three different Ivy League teams in the NCAA tournament last year and a couple of teams from the Patriot League. Yeah, because I think they can recruit that good talent like, like Grace Barbara, but Coach said um, having Grace now in the SEC, she's quickly, quickly adapted to the level of play, and she's certainly done a good job for this Arkansas team. Princeton was in the round of 32, so they had a win. I think they ended up losing to TCU, but it was Harvard, Princeton, and Brown that were the teams in the NCAA tournament. Bucknell from the Patriot League, Hostra from the Colonial, also were part of the big dance in women's college soccer. Arkansas losing to Rutgers in the Elite Eight. Piscataway. I mentioned LSU had a 2-0 lead at Rutgers this year before losing 3-2. And there was a hard shot and a takedown and a stoppage of play as Jocelyn Oliveri is slow to get up. Remember, she was the one that came on when Thorson was injured early in this match. That was a little bit of a late foul, if I'm being honest. I was expecting. Woo. I know she was just challenging the ball, but that's a scary, scary shot there. Tell you what, if I'm scared to walk to my car late at night, I'm going to take <laughs> B. Franklin with me because she will. She's fearless. <laughs> she is tough. All right, what are we waiting on? They're just going to drop it and play, I guess. There's the lake strength from Barbara. That's Cam Little-esque. Seven minutes to play in our first scoreless tilt so far between the Tigers and the Razorbacks. At the half, we'll hear from Ava Tankersley in a hog pod. And she sat down recently with Clay Henry and Hogs Plus. One of the takeaways for me, I've talked about a father, Dennis, and I broadcast 
I would imagine several of his games when he was a Portland Beaver and I was with the uh, mighty Sidewinders from Tucson in AAA baseball. She said that the day he got called up to the Padres was the day she was born. What a day in the Tankersley family. That's really special. I mean, it sounds like she has a ton of siblings and no disrespect to them, but their births didn't coincide <laughs> with a trip to the big leagues. <laughs> See Ava running a lot, her mom runs marathons. So you, you get an idea where that- Athletic family. Yeah, that running frame comes from Ava. Ava says she doesn't like to go run with mom because she goes too early in the morning and that's, <laughs> that's understood. She gets enough of that yes. here. She's still breathing heavily, but she's out for the time being. Arkansas has had eight shots to one for LSU. Probably get a chance to visit with Colby Hale before Team's head to the locker room. Felt like his team, in his words, just didn't execute the game plan well enough at Alabama. One of the phrases he used, Kelly, was we have to get tougher. This feels like this has been kind of a, a physical tough first half despite a, a scoreless match. And those are words you usually don't hear from Coach Hale because his team is already so tough. There's some of that speed, though, from LSU. As Ellie Pontagil hit the pitch. See if either team might have another good scoring look at opportunity, even a goal in the final 430. Kenzie Malum trying to win possession ends up in the seats. There's a few dogs out there, a few pooches here tonight. Let's see what LSU can do with their first corner kick. Indeed, first for the Tigers. Jordan Johnson going to play it in for LSU. right into the arms of Barbara. Feels like Arkansas's flurries have come where they've had two or three shots in a five minute span and then they've gone lengthy amounts of times maybe without one. Yeah, they have. and. I mean, again, like you said, most of this half has been played on LSU's uh, defensive side, but Arkansas has had one shot after another. And I know that going into the half, Colby's going to say, hey, listen, we got to keep doing that. We got to keep pressing high. We got to keep putting balls over their back line and creating these opportunities. Ellie yeah, Potichill, Junior at Ascensi, ready to throw it in for the Razorbacks. The seconds tick away here in the first. In the box, and another leaping, diving grab by Swift near the post. Credit to Swift for being on her feet and on her toes, just ready and not knowing when or where Arkansas is going to take a shot. It seems like she is just prepared and so focused in on this game. Anna Potagil, maybe that close to getting her 44th career goal. I love this angle. He was going to try and tuck that in and provide the first score. So that is the ninth shot by the Razorbacks. Jill Let's the deflection roll away. 140 and counting here in our first half. Going to 
we'll let her sister throw it in. You think they've had that conversation a few times? <laughs> Just I got a it. Few. You take it. Cleared by the Tigers. Now O'Reilly lets it trickle out. Headed back by Oliveri. Arkansas just keeps pumping it in. Time becoming a factor. They're matriculating their way down the field with multiple throw-ins here. Remember, no Tankersley on the field. She's been one of their assist leaders and goal scorers as well this season. That's a hard takedown. LSU may be one more clearance away from expiring this first half. LSU quite content to let a few of these seconds tick away. Kelly, that will do it on a scoreless first half between LSU and Arkansas. I think we've seen that grit and that defensive solidarity from LSU like Coach hoped. Hudson, though, was uh, forthcoming when she said maybe we got caught playing too direct, a little bit like Arkansas. And we're off and rolling in the second half. Pet man here as well tonight. Really blessed with some great weather. We started when the temperatures were north of 70. It's now down in the 50s, so it does have that fall feel to it. It feels like it's a Razorback football game with the band here. Tankersley went, let that one go through, but Potagil could not get there. Potagil remains one goal behind Julie Williford on the all-time program record list, 43 to 44. I will say we know it's coming, All right, Kelly? It's going to happen, and she's going to blaze past that record, but if you're going to get it, I know it's Maybe in the back of her mind, or at least her teammates' mind, they'd like to get it here. I was going to say, it's just a matter of time before she gets that. Would be nice to get it at Razorback Field, a chance to uh, possibly recognize her. I believe there's a memento coming her way. That's Colby about that yesterday. Now, keep in mind, in baseball, you go grab the, <laughs> the big ball, but it, you know, and you, you save it for the museum or whatever. Should the game, or the record tying or setting goal occur you know you take that ball out two minutes later it'll be kicked down the street and over to the high school and you'll never yep. see it again that record has stood for almost two decades potagil has a chance once she's done to leave that in the record books i would say forever it's going to be hard to play the volume of games she's played, let alone have the success and the volume. She's definitely been a legendary player for, for this Razorback program. So she's got another year of schooling, so another year of eligibility, taking advantage of that COVID year. And there's a couple of LSU Tigers that have also played a lot of college soccer that we'll reference soon. That's Emily Hauser going to play one forward. Barbara pops one downfield. He 
see how tightly the Tigers have defended some of those Razorback attackers. Swift, the veteran goalkeeper from Papillion, Nebraska. Now sizing up formations before she sends one forward. Played into the arms again of Swift. Tankersley so good with the assist, and I thought maybe she might have a chance to get another. Great job by Arkansas for winning that, that goal kick in the air. And I think that goes back to Colby Hale saying even set pieces or just winning balls in the air, that's where plays start from, and that's where goals start from. If you win the ball in the air, if you win set pieces, you're going to get one in the back of the net. No, that was a really good example of what uh, Colby mentions, and I think we saw that play out just a couple of moments ago. I mentioned if Arkansas would score first, a team on the road, knowing the way the Hogs play, it, it would change the urgency. I almost wonder, though, Kelly, if there's a little pressure on the Razorbacks when they played this long and they haven't been able to score despite 10 shots and a few chances. Oh, there's definitely frustration and I'm sure just eagerness to get that goal, but I definitely think they feel that weight right now. Two-handed grab again by Molly Swift. Do you think there's the tendency when you haven't scored in a while where you just start throwing things towards the goal rather than that, that great effort? You're just trying to throw as much against the wall to see if something might stick? Yes, that and that's actually a tactic that some teams do because keepers have to be resilient not only in the good shots but just the flicks and the, the nicks that come off player's foot. Um, so Swift has to be ready. Fifty minutes and change have expired in this match. Tracking right to Swift again. Is that ball about kneecap high a little bit dangerous in the sense that if you go down low too soon, maybe it, it squirts through or, or, or sneaks away as the post of the one that's you know at your shoulders were able to grab? That is the keeper's worst fear, and that is exactly why what she's doing is called a front smother, um, and that's why when you go on your knees and kind of curl the ball into your chest just to securely fasten it um, because, again, those balls at your waist and knees are so, so dangerous. Tankersley hoping to make a bit of an effort. Swift has been up to the task tonight. Keep in mind the Razorbacks have not scored since the 18th minute of the game on Sunday. Yeah, that is a long time for the Razorbacks to, to go without getting one in the back of the net. There also is no overtime in college soccer, at least in the regular season. If Arkansas should host some NCAA tournament games, and it certainly looks like they will, that would then change, and there would be not one but two overtimes, no sudden death, but no longer overtimes in the regular season, which I think is a little bit odd to have a different set of rules both in the regular season and postseason. It is odd, and I think it plays into some some teams' favors, which is why you know getting a getting a draw sometimes is still uh, good because you get that one point for SEC play. But every team also wants the win, and so I think it just it's I don't know how I feel about the rule. I think that postseason in the conference tournament will be a challenge because these teams have not played by those rules. You talk about your legs and playing multiple games. If you have 
you add a, a couple of overtime periods and then win and have to continue on, that's where maybe it'll be different. Yeah, that definitely will be a factor. Be a unique challenge, I would say. It'd be like playing 12 innings in baseball. There's my baseball. <laughs> I was of, waiting for it. Instead of 10, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's just play three more. That one up and over the post, over the uh, grandstand as well. Filippo arguing her case. I bet she's not speaking French now. <laughs> no, I think she's <laughs> arguing for, for a little touch there by the defender. You could get away with something, though, I would imagine, in French, <laughs> voicing your protest. You may not win your argument, but you could get a few things <laughs> off your chest, so to speak. Was there some type of issue, or did she think that ball grazed off a foot? I think she thought it grazed off the defender's foot, um, arguing for a corner kick. But it's hard to tell if it did or it not. It doesn't look tell. like it. It had a little steam to it as it went over the crossbar. 13 shots for the Razorbacks to one for LSU. Six of those shots on goal for the Hawks. It's an LSU team last year where they played Arkansas. They lost to Nea Alexander, who was drafted 14th overall by the Washington Spirit in the NWSL. We know what Arkansas lost from a professional standpoint. But Coach Hudson, coming back to Fayetteville, brought back some memories because she got the job right before Christmas in 2019. It was a simpler time back then. There was no <laughs> COVID. There was no chaos as that ball's played out. We know what transpired in March, and we didn't know if there was going to be a season. Found out a couple of weeks in advance that the SEC was going to play a conference-only slate in uh, the fall. We'll pause that for this. And, and these are some of the flashbacks. You know it's 2020, right? There's the mask. <laughs> Had that mask nearby. This was the first Division I game that Coach Hudson ever coached. They had a hard time getting flights during that crazy time. Here's the corner from the Hogs and headed out. So they ended up flying on their, you know, the charter jet. And she said, that was a welcome to the SEC moment. I go from driving the vans in D2, and now I'm on a jet in the SEC, albeit wearing a mask and going through the chaos that was the fall of September 2020. What a change of events. You could tell, though, she, met, she brought that up for us. Yeah, and she was excited to come back to Fayetteville. There's no doubt. And she felt like they had a chance to make a statement that day and didn't get the win. I, I, quite frankly, I think every team was just happy to be playing. There were other conferences that were unsure. That one headed up, and Swift will go collect it. She had a circuitous route to get to that deflection, but she played it. So I think this is kind of a full circle moment for her to come back here and what will be year number three, hoping for a chance to get a win against a ranked opponent after going 0-2-2 so far. She feels like they're on that bubble, and a win tonight I think would put her team in a much different position for the postseason than when this match started. That went up in the lights. Power downfield by Barbara, and that's what that lake strength can do. Maybe it starts a run. Potagil doesn't get there. Swift has to come off her line way out of the box to secure it out of the six. But that's the lake strength of Barbara and what that can trigger downfield. Yeah, Barb can create those opportunities that, that Arkansas needs at this point in the game. Filippo quickly plays it back in. The Hogs a little bit of urgency in the last few minutes. 15 of the 16 shots in this match have come off the feet of a Razorback. Yet nothing has found the back of the net as we're nearing the 32 minute mark to go from Razorback field. Well, when Potagil gets to number 45, this is the token that will await her. It'll be a nice memento. That's really cool. Can we send her home with that tonight or is she gonna have to wait? <laughs> She's gonna have to get a couple, I think, first. Number 45 will be the big one. So some thought has gone into that already. Of 
quite frankly, Arkansas would take any goal right now because this LSU defense and the keeper, Molly Swift, who has saved six tonight, has thwarted whatever efforts Arkansas has put forward. So these teams playing those two matches back to back at the end of last year's regular season in the tournament, they scored a combined nine goals in the two. Nothing so far tonight. Kelly, is LSU concerned that they've only had one shot and, and nothing on goal to this point, even though they played such good defense? Uh, I, w I don't know if I'd say it's a concern, but I definitely know that Coach Hudson is frustrated just as Coach Hale is frustrated in, in the opportunities and or the, the quality of chances on goal. Um, so I think they're going to look for that. They're going to continue to press high, but they're also satisfied with their defense. I mean, you can't be unhappy about that. Got to separate offense from defense. Shayna Flynn out for the Razorbacks. LSU transfer heads out. She's played a lot of minutes tonight. Glover also in for LSU, the New Orleans native. She's also scored four goals this year, so that would rank near the top of the list. Herman's daughter with six leads this team. One thing I love that Coach Hudson said earlier this week um, when you were just talking about her career and her coaching career at LSU, she, she spoke very highly of this team in that they're a family. Um, they have an unbelievable chemistry. They have a great staff. And I think a lot of that plays out on the field because if you don't have good chemistry, you're not going to play well. I think at this time of the year as well, when things become a little more grueling, They've had some moments of adversity, she's mentioned, and they've responded quickly. I think any coach in any sport wants to be able to say that when our teams have been challenged instead of wilting is when we've risen up, maybe learned from some of our mistakes and put forward a better effort. And I think to this point they have, just trying to sneak in a goal and maybe get out of here with a win. Let's see if the Hogs can make a run. Tankersley sends one towards the box, but up on top of the net. I think that was one cross you're starting to see, like you said earlier, Brett, just trying to get the ball into the box. They don't care if it's a quality service, just trying to get numbers in there. They wanted to see one, at least an opportunity for a header, some chance maybe. This is where the Hogs defensively, though, are going to have to be equal to the task. Hey, Filippo went down to play on. That's where the likes of Ella Riley and others, I think, have become impactful this year. And there's Riley tracking the ball. i got to believe she has played considerably more minutes than she would have anticipated at the beginning of this year. Sent forward by Malum. How about almost 1,200 minutes? This is what Hauser and Riley have done, but they have been on this field, both by performance and at times at a necessity with injuries. But you see Riley, the only freshman on that four-digit minute leaderboard. Yeah, as a freshman, that is such a big deal. Um, I can speak from experience. Coach Hale does not just play you um, based on your year and what year you are. He plays based on what you can provide and how you can help this team. And so I think that just speaks volumes about her. Ponda Jill, there's a lot of coaching going on right now. Yeah, do that. Just circle <laughs> around and keep twisting. <laughs> but this is where shots have become a little bit harder here in the second half. Speaking of minutes, though, I mentioned LSU and some of their veterans. See what the Hogs do first here on this kick inside the box. Headed away. The combination of Shannon Cook, one of the captains, and Lindsey Jennings, what they have done in their career. They have a chance tonight. Jennings 
could go over 7,300 minutes playing college soccer, and Jennings could go over 6,700 career minutes. That's huge. And Jennings, uh, coach spoke so highly of her, saying she's one of two players, you know, that that the team and the coaching staff looks up to the most um, for leadership on and off the field, vocally, physically, emotionally, and just a great example for this team. Yeah, I think as you have some younger players, you rely on the experience, and it's hard to be more experienced than that, to play that much. I mean, that's taking advantage of that COVID year and playing pretty much every match over five years. Finally played out. So one, you have to be good, you have to be durable, you have to stay injury free, you have to take advantage of a fifth year. And try and get this LSU team back to the NCAA tournament. Last year was the seventh all-time trip to the NCAAs. That one will be poked away. I think LSU won their first eight matches last year, so they were feeling pretty good about their spot in the postseason early. And a few more wins against ranked teams. This year may be a little more of a resume building stretch, both in weeks and maybe months. Molly Swift has been up to the task. Seven shots on goal, six saves for Swift. Kelly Arkansas is in one of these lulls where they have really not had a good look on goal in several minutes. Yeah, I think at, at halftime, Coach Hale just told him, hey, whatever shot you can get, take at this point. Is he telling her she's taking too much time? I'm actually not sure. Because if he is, he's taking too much time <laughs> telling her she's taking too much time. It's almost a bit of a breather. Left footed goalie. Disrupted again by the Tigers. Malum trying to control. Could Arkansas get a better look? A lot of white jerseys surrounding the ball. There's the urgency. The Razorbacks wasting little time, right? They're getting that ball and playing it back in. Yeah, they are not wasting any time getting back to business on the field. Possession won by the Razorbacks. Off the crossbar. There wasn't a hog home to maybe play the deflection and put it in. But still possession for Arkansas. I think Swift was kind of caught off guard, not knowing if the ball was going to go over the net, and that's why she just put a hand up, hoping to tip it over. Filippo sends one right, chin high, into the hands of Swift again. Let's go back and watch this one. Yeah, that's a tough ball. However, she, she kind of opened as a former goalkeeper. You're supposed to open your body to the goal. She kind of did it the opposite way, um, which kind of made her, her feet um, off balance there. I thought Bree Hunter was going to have a chance to get a goal. Is she playing in a little different role now, playing forward maybe more than her years as a defender? Yeah, she is. And I think she's one of those just versatile players that Coach Hale can play anywhere and give them a good chance like they're getting here. Hanajil by the keeper. The offsides flag went up. A moment of excitement. <laughs> Fans hoping that that one was going to count. Once Swift came so far away from the area, let's watch this one again. Where's the offsides, Kelly? Right there. Yeah. It, was, it was right yeah. as the ball was played. Credit for Swift, though, for coming out. I mean, you do what you can in those situations, but thankfully the flag went up. See, as they tell me in that Wrexham documentary, always look for the flag. 
<laughs> You're learning. Uh, slowly. <laughs> it is. You, you know, that old dog knew tricks. Colby Hale not pleased. I'm not sure if there may have been a yellow card. We're hearing that it could have been. Yellow card in Arkansas comes across the stat broadcast, so that indeed is the case. Kelly, how does the substitutions and the strategy maybe change because Arkansas is not playing from ahead, but even? Yeah, I think, um, thankfully, Coach Hale has a lot of depth on his bench, and he can call on any players, and they're supposed to be ready. But um, I, at this point in the game, if they're not delivering results, they will get subbed out. Tankersley spent the last 10 minutes or so of the first half on the sideline. I don't know if you can take some of your top scorers out, at least for long stretches, if you're still looking for that goal to possibly win. Yeah, I'm not sure the strategy behind that one, but um, yeah, she is one that they need. And Flynn, and Flynn back in, Filippo out for the time being. This is where you begin to deal with a little bit of fatigue. Taylor Doblis also in for the Tigers. Franklin was maybe trying to leave that for a teammate. There was none there. 21 minutes to play. 17 shots to one for Arkansas. Bree Hunter squirted one through a couple of Tigers, but out. Here's a look at Saturday's Week 8 SEC Network College football lineup. Fresh off their big win against Alabama, number three, Tennessee hosts UT Martin in Knoxville at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. Then Vanderbilt takes on Missouri at 4 Eastern in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Texas A&M squares off against South Carolina, who've won three straight, all three games. Also available on the ESPN app. You got a nickname on UT Martin for me? Can you, uh, can you go deep into the... This is a tester. <laughs> no. My baseball analyst would have no chance, but I'm thinking maybe you played against UT Martin at some point? I think we did, but it's been a while, Brett. the Skyhawks. Would you have won that bet or lost it if I gave you a multiple choice? I would choice? have lost. Understood. Lost. Fail. We're inside 20 minutes here in this matchup between LSU and Arkansas. Sent forward. No one there to play it. Potagio was the closest. You've used a word a few times tonight. I think we can see it a little bit on the faces of a few of these players. Frustration. Yeah, I think we're seeing that on both both teams' faces, honestly. Um, from the Razorback standpoint, they have 18 shots and nothing to show for it. There's the shots on goal. All belonging to Arkansas, trying to get another here. Potagio is hoping to control to get a strike. Malum with possession. I think the proficiency of LSU and their speed has disrupted a few. Take away by Malum. Mackenzie Malum lost possession, albeit briefly.
Taylor Dobles, who just check, checked in, the junior out of Pembroke Pines, Florida, getting involved defensively. of added to the atmosphere inside Racer Backfield. You've gotten a look at the renderings for the new renovations and updates. That'll be fabulous. Yeah, this program is, is in for a treat. And we never had the band back when I played, oh, so I, I'm, yeah, a, I'm a little bitter at some of this. There's a lot of bitterness <laughs> coming from you. Just a tad. Facilities. Crowds, band. No, it's top notch though, and I, it, again, it just goes back to how much the program has grown and uh, just the level that, that they're at right now. I get the feeling there are several SEC teams that could say the same thing over the last five to ten years. I think television's a big reason why. Can Arkansas get another shot on goal and a good one? Headed up by Tanker Slick. He'll do it again. Does LSU have more numbers back against the Razorbacks? Um, it looks like they're they're just playing with everyone back um, to help help out their back line, honestly. So yeah, I would say so. Obviously, when you've taken one shot all night, the interest in scoring is wildly different than keeping Arkansas from having their chances. Yeah, and as Coach said, she was going into the half to tell her team to deny the shots at the top of the 18 and limit their chances to hopefully take some pressure off of Swift. I mean, she's doing so much work back there, and her, her defenders need to do some, some work to deny those shots from Arkansas. It would seem like, and this one played up and out, if Arkansas isn't able to handle a pass cleanly where you're trying to gather and collect, you don't have time if you don't get it cleanly before there's a defender there to poke it away or contest. That is very true. The game of soccer is all about time and space, and Arkansas does not give you a lot of it. So the game plan for Coach Hudson might be working out nicely. If they can get out of here. And to keep in mind, they haven't had a, a win against a ranked team, but they've had two ties and maybe possibly a third. But they'd love to sneak a goal try here, get a shot away. Grace Barbara got rolled. Wrong place, wrong time. Let's see if Grace is okay after that collision with Taylor Dobles. Great call on the referee. Um, as a former goalkeeper, those late attacks and those late slide tackles like that, especially in the face, are extremely dangerous. Another card coming out. Let's take a look at this one again. Mm, that was almost kneecapped ahead. Yep. You could see Robles saying, listen, I just got caught, right? I mean... Wasn't trying to knee Barbara in the head, but result you can't legislate intent, only the result. Correct. I mean, yes, her intent was she was going for the ball. Potagel. Rolling one softly by the post. Inside 15 minutes to play. Well, you've seen some hard contact tonight, though, Kelly. I mean, this has been physical. Yeah, you don't come to Razorback Stadium for anything less than a physical match. Um, but I have to give it to LSU. You know, they've brought some of that physicality, too, to this game, and it's been tough. Well, you're exactly right. It's not been one team delivering the blows. It has been... A couple of teams slugging it out. I think LSU is actually second in the conference in fouls per game. Will the Razorbacks get an opportunity 
for another shot. They've been at 19 for a little while. 19 of the 20 shots have belonged to Arkansas. Tankersley playing one near the six. Tremendous effort by Malum, grabbed by Swift again. Not sure if that would have snuck inside the post or been wide, but a better scoring opportunity denied once again by LSU. Yeah, it looks like that shot would have been just wide. We'll get another look at it here, but again, credit to Swift for getting her body there and just making that save. I think you're right. He was going to hit the post or be wide. It had a bit of a curl to it, a bit of a bend. See all the white jerseys, though, in the area? A handful of Tigers are there. Was going to be out. Just played away by Ella Riley. LSU has had one corner kick so far in the match. We're heading towards the 77th minute. Herman's daughter do the honors. Native of Iceland. Won't even send it into the box, but can LSU get a chance? Right into the arms, shoulder high of Grace Barbara. Second shot of the match by LSU in their first, dare I say, in about an hour. Yeah, it's so important for Grace back there to, even though she hasn't been challenged as much as Swift has tonight, she has to stay mentally engaged uh, and physically, and that's why she's able to make even those just saves right at her. Might be tough at times just to kind of get caught watching because of the amount of time they played on the other end of the field. Yeah, that's very easy to do, but Grace is a veteran, and she hasn't done that. She has to really yell for her teammates to hear her. She's so far downfield, and she's going to come up maybe in do the kick as well from near the midfield stripe, near the Razorback. This will get her involved. Yep, she's got the foot, so might as well use her to create more bodies in the box and get this opportunity in the back of the net. Let's see if she wants to send this close to the goal as well. Headed up. Bree Hunter can't quite get there and Swift one more time, able to use her hands to secure the ball. Nearing the 11 minute mark, 20 to two. The Razorbacks lead the shot tally, but still looking for the first. If indeed we get a first, get a goal. And that one goes well wide of the post. Here's Tiffany Hansen, the assistant. She'll be part of the U-17 Women's World Cup. It's an assistant. I can't keep track of all the international competitions in your sport. <laughs> Maybe you can make me a cheat sheet of some sort. There's a lot, but the, the Women's World Cup and under 17 is a big deal. I bet it is. Another one grabbed by Swift. Out of Jill trying to put Arkansas in front. Let's take a look at this one again. That's a great strike. And a great hold. Razorbacks were there to, to get number two if Swift dropped it, but she held that solid. One thing Coach Hudson told us about her goalie, unbelievable feet. I think she also needs to add great hands. I suppose feet put you in a position where you can utilize your hands and not be diving or lunging. Yeah, we've definitely seen tonight why, why Coach said we trust her. You know, uh, she's an intelligent human being, an intelligent soccer player, and she's learned from the moments like the game against Alabama and come out strong against teams like Tennessee and Arkansas. If you're just tuning in and you're seeing 0-0 zero, zero at nine minutes to play, you might think, well, both of these goalies have been tremendous tonight. Well, Grace Barbara's had just 
three shots against her and one on goal. Where Arkansas, on the other hand, 21 shots, nine on goal. It's been a much stiffer test for Swift. Many more opportunities to try and keep Arkansas off the scoreboard. We'll see what transpires in the remaining 850 and change. Each of these type of slow rolls will eat away a few more seconds. Instead, we have a player down. And that's Margot Reemson. She just checked in in the last minute or so, the junior out of Little Rock, and again away from the action, so I didn't see what transpires. Just a few moments ago, We gave you a few highlights on a montage of the physical night. These two teams battling each other. The trainers have been busy tonight. Colby Hale out quickly as well to check in with his player. For the most part, the coaches like to check in but allow the athletic trainers to do their jobs with the clock stopped 8.31 to play. Let's go back and take one more look to see if we might be able to detect what happened. They're going to get her up and assist Margo over to the sideline, really favoring, of course, that right knee, that right leg. Here's the look. Yeah, it looks like it could have been a knee yeah. or a leg. It's one of those non-contact stop, start injuries that are so frightening. Especially in soccer. That's all your game is, stop and start and cutting, avoiding turning. contact, yes. It was early in this match that Angelina Thorsen from Sweden went out for LSU. Clock rolling again as Barbara pounds one up into the sky. We showed you the graphic a few times that if the season ended the other day, and I believe that's Angelina, these teams would be lined up to meet in what would be the second round in Pensacola. So who knows, they might meet again. Right now, they're just. For the second year in a row. Yes, back to back. Maybe a run for the Tigers. Well, I'm trying to win it, but it'll stay LSU possession. So again, if the season ended today, before the match tonight, Arkansas three, LSU six. On the same side of the bracket as Tennessee with Bama on the other side. I think if you're Arkansas, you'd love another chance at Alabama, but you'd be preferred to be in the championship game. That's what I was going to say. They'd be happy about being on the other side there and just wait for the finals. But that's where being the third seed and not the fourth is important. I'd rather not play them in the semifinals in the sense, you know, it would be another possible top 10 match it. See some sense of urgency from, from Grace Barbara there and just getting the ball up and trying to get her team in LSU's box. All right, in your mind, Kelly, when it comes to LSU really sagging back in and taking away whatever scoring chance Arkansas can send forward versus maybe trying to sneak a goal and score themselves, where do you come down on that weight? You come down to you getting the goal and you getting the bodies up on their half. Um, you hope and pray that Grace isn't back there by herself defending, but um, you get everybody forward at this point in the game. There was a grab by Franklin, and then uh, that was a good tackle. That was bumper pool esque. B. Franklin got the yellow card. I'm not sure our official has any more yellow cards left. He's thrown quite a few out in the last. 20 minutes. The 
Six and a half to play. Arkansas will win the possession. Arkansas had nine shots in the first half. Kelly, they've had 12 in the second. They've had more. Yeah, I think that, again, goes back to Coach Hale telling them at half, and kind of like he told us in our interview, we got to get more opportunities. we we got to take more chances. There's the total shots, 21 to 4. Just hoping to get not only a few more shots, but some shots on goal and some good ones. LSU playing a bit of keep away, and it's been a successful strategy. Herman Stoddard, though, now hoping to get loose. Molly Baker scored four times this season. Former Tar Heel sends one wide. Coach Hudson talked about her individual moments of brilliance yes. all season. So who knows, in these last five minutes, we could see one of those moments of brilliance uh, that could put them on the board. She had more shot attempts than any of her teammates. Two of her four goals came in the first two matches. So is Sussy in, Filippo out as Arkansas will bring on a fresher body. Here's the shot that is well wide of the mark. There was a little bit of that <laughs> frustration, right? Yep, you can see her take a deep breath. Sussy was trying to play it forward. Fresh legs should have burst. Different uniforms, different numbers. Captain Caden back in the uh, control rooms all on top of the roster. I'll have you know. He's been all over it today. Instrumental in uh, breaking these new numbers down. Producer's a little sassy tonight. Have you noticed that? <laughs> I think he just might be giving it back to you, is that Brett. Right? Well, <laughs> is that allowed? <laughs> We've gone from producer Paul to Captain Caden, and uh, they're both a little fired. Flag up, 330 remains. In the 29 previous matchups, there have been three draws. Sussy went down after the header. Throw in here from Tankersley, Arkansas trying to go fast. Tankersley with the left foot into the box. Sussy couldn't get there, taken away by the Tigers. B. Franklin had it briefly for the Razorbacks. Now Herman's daughter and LSU. There's those long strides moving the ball downfield, intercepted by Emily Hauser. Two and a half to go. Sussy tried to poke one through. Yeah, Arca oh. Kelly, I was going to say Arkansas had a 3-3 draw at BYU, and that's it as far as the draws. Yeah, I was just going to say Arkansas is struggling to find feet right now. They're, I know they're trying to play every kind of ball over the, the back line's head and get a ball in, but they've got to start, start finding possession in, in order to create those opportunities. Start to think about Hugh, how few opportunities or possessions may still exist. Saved by Malum. Headed forward. Potagel came racing in. The ball sent skyward as we tick to a minute 30 remaining.
Tankersley. Again collected by Swift. What a night Molly Swift has had. Her teammates really have been giving her the credit, too. After every save she makes, they go and tap her on the back and kind of say thank you. She gets two sandwiches on the flight home tonight <laughs> on the charter instead of one. I'm sure she will. Let's go back and take a look at the previous effort. I'm not sure if this was tracking to the goal or not, but might have found its way to that far post. Inside a minute, this is where if you're LSU, you just uh, allow these seconds to tick away. Can either team get one more decent shot before time expires? Beginning to think the answer may be no to that question. Each team won a matchup last year head to head. Could the third in the last year and a half end up as a draw? Maybe one more chance for the Tigers. Well, that's a long run for Barbara coming off her line. Yeah, she's just trying to get the ball to play it up. Trying to win whatever she can. And the final seconds will tick away and the Tigers and the Razorbacks finish in a 0-0 draw at Razorback Field. A game that featured 26 shots, 21 for the Razorbacks. It won't be a win against a ranked opponent, but LSU for the second straight game, Kelly, against 